Hi, my name is Bob Pellerin, CTO Bob, and today I'll be unboxing a really big box. This is a Dell Power Edge T340. Um, we would reviews in the past rack mounted. We'd seen a an R640. This is a smaller uh, sibling of it. It's a single processor uh, server, and this is a tower, hence the T in the name. Please, if you enjoy these videos, encourage us by subscribing. Now, of course, if you like this particular video, give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. Put your comments below. So let's go ahead and open this. And let's take a look to see what comes right out of the box. So as you'll see, there's very minimal uh, in there. You can select if you want things like, uh, which in this case, it's not rack mount. I was about to say rails, but in this case, there would not be any rails. Oops, this is actually... So this is going to be the two power cables. And the only other thing you'll find is very, very limited information regarding the server. There's a bit of a how-to, but I mean, when you're setting these up, you're pretty much expected to know what you're going to do with it. Uh, this is not typically for the home user, obviously. So let's put this down. And the rest is the server. So let's go ahead and unpack this. Pull this out. Breaking anything. And we'll go ahead and move the box. So let's start by the back end. We'll do the opposite. So let's take a look at where all the action is. Um, when you purchase these, you can have a single or dual power supplies. I always highly recommend getting two. And the whole purpose of this is if one goes, this is usually one of the weak spots in a server, that and the drives. So, and they are hot swappable, which means that you simply push on the orange tab, pull them out. And this is a 495 watt, as is written right there, a power supply. So one of these breaks, you pull it out, put in a new one, I have seen these break. I've even seen one catch fire once. So, usually when I get something brand new like this, I will take it apart and inspect everything. Now, if we keep moving, we're going to notice our, well, there's empty slots here. So, these are full length. So, you can, they're full sized cards that go in there. You've got some USB keys, uh, USB keys, sorry, USB ports. Um, you'll find some more USB on the bottom. You'll find two Ethernet ports here. And this is the iDRAC. In this case, we have an iDRAC that is enterprise, which means that we'll be able to remotely control and remotely see this server. Um, remote it. <laughs> we'll be done. Let's take a quick look. The sides have nothing, but this is a tower. There's already dust on it, and it's brand new. So the front. As most uh, are all Dells, you have a little tab that you pull, and don't want everybody to see the serial number, but basically you got a serial number on top of there. It'll give you the, the tag number and so forth, and there's a password underneath it for the iDRAC. I mean, the rest is pretty standard. You've got your on-off switch, which, by the way, is very small, and that's on purpose so that no one will go and accidentally touch it. And the rest... We've got some base here that you could add things. I mean, originally, I guess uh, you would have put CD-ROM or DVD uh, ROMs there, uh, players. And um, so the drives in this case, these are for the larger drives, the three and a half. However, as you can imagine, I only use uh, SSDs as much as possible. And what they've got is they've got this nice little conversion uh, uh, bay here. And what it does is basically it gives you the smaller SSD into a larger bay. In this case, I've got some uh, 960 gigs on here. And these are hot swap as well. So they simply just, it's easier when you're in front of it. Just put it in and that's it. That's all there is to it. And the same thing with the other one. So that's about it. Now let's take a quick look at the guts of this machine. Like I said, these are customizable. So when you order one, you're gonna get to pick how much memory you want, what kind of CPU you want. This is a single processor machine. 
and like our uh, I believe this one here is actually in the locked position. So let's go ahead and unlock it. And that's not terribly complicated. Just take a screwdriver and put it in the unlock position. And then you simply press down and here we go. One of the things you might want to notice is there is a diagram inside. And what they do is they basically show you around and tell you how to put some memory. They explain to you a little bit about the motherboard, what's where. So right now I'm holding it upside down apparently. But uh, so yes, yeah, so you get some of the information regarding the motherboard and how to service it, how to put a CPU and so forth. Please keep in mind this does come fully configured. So there's nothing at this point to add. I mean, if we want to expand it in the future, then we certainly could. So a lot of what you're seeing right now is plastic, namely this part, and this is part of the ventilation system. So you've got some air ducts, basically is what this is. And it makes sure that the air flows from the fan and that everything is uh, nice and cool in here. Large cooler on the processor there. This is a Perk uh, 730P and it has two gigs of RAM and this is what controls the drives. I highly again recommend getting this as a minimum. There's also the H740s which are out which have a larger, I think they're up to eight gigs of cache on there. Um, usually the faster the controller, the better off you are. When you do have a problem with a RAID 1 or RAID 5, when the machine has to rebuild the RAID, like in RAID 5 or RAID, RAID 6, you will want to have um, a faster controller, basically, that will allow you to get a uh, faster speed of recovery. So apart from that, also, the one thing you'll notice with these units, uh, if you go back to my other video of the R640, you'll notice a lot, a lot of memory uh, slots. In this case, Right below the processor, if you'll, you'll notice there's only four. And uh, in this case, what we've got is we've got uh, two 16 gigs on there. This uh, server is going to be running just, well, it's going to run VMware, but it's going to be running a very small VM. So there wasn't need for a whole lot of uh, horsepower on this one. And that's it. This one particular processor, and you can't really tell the difference anyways, but it's an E2288. And apart from that, I mean, you're pretty much ready to go. You've got the processors, the memories, controller goes to the two drives in front. And all that's left to do is uh, power it up with VMware. We're going to be putting uh, ESXi version 7 on here. And that will be running uh, probably, a, well, not probably, it will be running a Windows server on top of that. One of the interesting things that we do with these is we'll generally go and add a USB key in here. I've mentioned this in another video, so what I'll do is I'll take a small form factor, one of those small metal uh, USB keys, put it in here, and why I do that is when I load the operating system, I'm actually going to be loading the ESXi the VMware on that instead of on the drives. And then what I do is I clone that key. If anything should happen, I can just swap it out. In fact, if even you know that port happens to not work anymore, then I could put it in the back or the front and it's an easy way to future-proof your server in that the operating system can easily be removed, reinstalled, and whatnot, and never actually touched your data stores that are on the drives in the front. So from that point of view, it's simpler. Uh, I had some of the questions I got uh, from the videos, and it's actually on YouTube, was, well, why would you do that? And just keep in mind, when you purchase these servers, especially the rack-mounted ones, uh, they always give you the option of getting an SD reader. So it's the same types of little cards that you would use in your camera. And the reason why people buy those, and they'll get a dual one, is that you will put two cards, two SD cards in the server and put VMware on that. I choose to put them on a USB. Um, it's not really that expensive either way. But uh, so it is common practice. And I uh, originally came across this and was a little dumbfounded as well as to why they weren't just putting them on the drives. But over time, as drives fail, things get replaced, you want to have faster, bigger drives and so forth, uh, you want to have the ability to just rip out the drives, move things out of the data store. If your operating system is on the drive, 
it becomes a little more complicated. It's one more step. If it's on USB key, you can either copy the USB key to something else, or if you think about it, you could literally just take it out, put a new one in, reinstall VMware from scratch, brand new installation of whatever version you want, and then simply just re-import the VMs. It connects back to the data stores. Pretty simple in a very small environment. So that was a, a quick look around of this uh, the T340. As I said, I, I really like Dell products overall. HP is a great brand as well. I just uh, happen to have gotten some uh, good service. The things that will fail over time uh, really are the drives and the power supplies. Again, the power supplies are quite easy to change. You saw the hard drive in the front as well that are easy to take out and put back in. Uh, when you're on warranty, you just call them up. They will send you a new drive. You take that one out, put the new one in. The RAID rebuilds, and that's all there is to it. Same thing with power supplies. Uh, so yeah, these make uh, great workhorses for your environment. If you're going to be in a larger environment, definitely go for the R-Series rack mount. Um, in the very, very small office satellite offices, for example, this is the type of thing that I will put in. In this case, the client specifically wanted a tower, so this is what we got. So thanks for watching. I'm Bob Pellerin. Again, if you want to encourage us, please go ahead and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.